Hey, it's Gabe with Vitev. And over the last 10 years or so, we've noticed a lot more people now calling with questions and trying to figure out how they can put minerals back into their reverse osmosis water. Uh, it's a really good trend. Uh, it's something that has definitely been growing and something we didn't see as much when we first got started. But now more and more people are realizing that, hey, those ROs are really great for filtration. They take everything out of the water, at least high 90% of everything out of the water. The problem is they don't distinguish between the good and the bad. So when you're taking all of that out, you got to figure out a way to put the good stuff back in. And as a result of that awareness, we're starting to see more and more things out there that are advertised as adding minerals back to RO water. And so we're going to talk about the five main categories that you'll find, the five main methods that you'll find out there of how to put those minerals back. We're going to talk about the pros and cons of each one and help you decide which one's the best for your situation. All right, the first one, and this is by far the most popular one you're going to find, the most common thing that you're going to see out there. It's all over online retailers. There's tons of these on Amazon. They're the thing, this is the method that's pushed by all the big brands, you know, the guys that are in homes doing water softeners or uh, whole house systems and going door to door and water testing and all that kind of stuff, right? This is the, the method that they would recommend. And they're what we would affectionately, somewhat affectionately call the cheap calcium cartridges. Uh, you'll know these because of two things. The price point, you can typically find them for like 30 bucks, maybe even on Amazon. Um, and their ingredient list, they really have one ingredient, something called calcite, uh, C-A-L-C-I-T-E, calcite. Sometimes it's referred to as calcium carbonate, uh, but that's it. That's all it is. It's just a lab-based form of calcium. And so if your goal in this whole process of remineralizing your water is simply to take your, your TDS reading from your current RO where it's 5 or 10 ppm part per million maybe right now, and you want to bring it up to 25 or 30 part per million, these kind of cartridges are going to work for you. Um, that's, that's what they're really made to do. But you really have to understand where they came from to understand what they're doing now. And Because this didn't start with uh, a, a, an in-home or a residential RO fix. This, this idea originated in a manufacturing or industrial or even a municipal water treatment type of application. Sometimes in those situations, you have low pH water. Even in homes today, there are some homes that have a low pH water coming into the house. And what that does is it degrades your pipes. It's a very aggressive water, so it degrades your pipes, fittings, appliances, electronics, all the stuff that you would think about in a factory or an industrial setting that could be harmed from an acidic, aggressive water. They had to figure out a way to, to treat that. And the best and most affordable, cheapest way to do it was calcite. It actually blended with something else called Corosex. It was kind of a fast-acting and a long-lasting uh, ingredient. Okay, and so. Um, those two things combined would bring the pH of the water up, it would lessen the aggressiveness, and it kept the pipes and the appliances and all that kind of the, the machinery working better. And so when this desire from people started to pop up about needing more minerals in their water in their homes, well, what's a cheap and easy fix? The same thing these huge companies have been using. The problem is that form of calcium is really not something we should be ingesting a whole lot. Um, and it's not a form that's necessarily you know, that bioavailable for the body. So the point of these is to fix a problem with your home's plumbing. It's really not made for our body's plumbing. It's kind of a way to think of it, okay? It's also not gonna address uh, anything else regarding the water. There's not gonna be no antioxidant improvement. It's really not gonna help the hydration level of the water so much. Um, it's still gonna have a very aggressive um, uh, or oxidation component to the water. Uh, it will help the taste a little bit because anytime you add a little bit of minerals to a, a stale water, the taste is going to improve. But you're really going to be missing out on some pretty significant aspects of water that we need to have. And that if you're going to remineralize your water in the first place, you should probably take advantage of. So this is not something we recommend for a variety of reasons. It's really the only one that we would not recommend in any situation. Unfortunately, it's the most popular one out there. So uh, that's the calcite cartridges on the number two. All right, next up, number three, are what are called, uh, there's a couple different names these go by, pH drops, uh, alkaline drops, alkaline mineral drops, mineral drops, you can find them in a variety of different ways. But basically what these are is just a concentrated bottle of, of a mineral blend. Typically a really good blend of minerals, it's usually an ionic form of them. Uh, you're gonna find a blend of calcium, magnesium, potassium typically. Um, years ago, there used to be a lot of salt in these, but the, most of these companies have since gotten rid of that salt and gone with better forms of, of minerals for you. Um, so it's a very effective, a much better way to consume minerals than those calcite cartridges are. 
this is a really good quality uh, product. Now, what you have to think about though is these are meant to be like a supplement would be, like you're taking it once or twice a day. In fact, even if you look at the, the ingredient list or the dosage list um, recommendation on the label, you know, you're supposed to use it once or twice a day. So this is not gonna be something you're putting into every glass of water you drink. It's not gonna go into your coffee or your tea or anything else you make in the house, soup, you know, that kind of stuff. It's gonna have a very limited application. Um, you're also probably not gonna wanna use these if there's lots of people drinking water in the home. You know, maybe one or two of you, okay. But if you're gonna start using this with a couple of kids and all that, you're gonna run through these bottles really, really fast. And they're not exactly inexpensive. You know, you could be spending 30, 35 bucks a month just on this type of product. Um, so if you think about these correctly, think about them as a supplement and use them in that way, they're very effective. Have a glass of mineral water once in the morning and once in the evening or something like that, right? Take it like you would a vitamin or a mineral supplement. Uh, if you have to travel, these are pretty effective for that too. Keep them in your purse or in your bag. Grab a bottle of water at the store and put some mineral drops in there and make the water better for you. Those are all good ways to utilize these drops. But using them in the home with your RO system, thinking you're going to make all of your water better, it's just not a good way to use it. It's not what it was designed to be used for, and it's not going to be effective for your situation. All right, number three, baking soda and or a mineral salt, a Himalayan salt of some kind, some high-end salt, okay? Um, this is kind of the, uh, the DIY approach to making alkaline water. And I'm not against DIY. I love doing DIY stuff. Um, I mean, that's kind of me. But in this respect, it's probably not the best way to go about doing it. Um, because um, while I can appreciate the, the simplicity of the idea, you know, it's kind of like the, the poor man's version of the mineral drops. Um, this has some significant downsides that the mineral drops would not offer, right? So I wouldn't even suggest this in a portable way or a traveling type of situation or even a supplement type of situation. Um, because if you, uh, well, it just doesn't taste good, number one. A baking soda water or a very salty water does not taste well, right? You're not going to use it in every glass. Again, you're not going to put it in your coffees and your teas and your soups and all that kind of stuff. Um, but this also has another issue in that uh, you can kind of overdose on this stuff. And if you use too much baking soda in your water, uh, you're going to have uh, some digestive issues. There's some side effects that come with baking soda that can lead to uh, some pretty urgent trips to the bathroom, some explosive results. Uh, it's not a good situation. So you got to be careful on how much you're going to put into your water. If you put too much salt in your water, obviously it's just going to taste bad. And then there are some long-term issues with having too much sodium uh, in your diet as well, even the good salts. So um, this is, again, kind of an idea of use it for once, maybe twice a day. Put a little bit in your water in the morning, maybe to get your digestion going or have a kind of a quick detox start to your day. That's all fine. But again, thinking that you're going to use this every glass, all the water you drink, all the water your kids drink, all that, it's not going to happen. And those kids won't drink it, right? It's just going to taste too bad for them. So um, use it with a purpose, a detox, uh, an awakening kind of thing in your morning, whatever. But don't think this is a simple way and an easy way and a cheap way to put minerals back into your RO water. It just doesn't work like that. All right, number four, uh, alkaline water pitchers. There are lots and lots of these available. We've done some other videos to kind of walk through how to choose a good one versus a bad one, what to look out for, that kind of stuff. Uh, but there's a ton of these alkaline pitchers available uh, across the market today. And these would probably be our number two recommendation. Um, they do really well at bringing the pH up. They definitely improve the antioxidant qualities of the water. And you can find some that put some hydrogen back in the water too. That's always good. The taste is gonna be great. Um, you can use them for everything in your home, cooking wise or, or drinks, right? Coffees, teas, soups, all that sort of stuff. And so it's a more effective and more wide ranging use, a more wide ranging way to, to fix your RO water. But they have one, one caveat or one downside, and that is they're designed to be used more with a tap water than they are an RO water. And so the cartridges that are inside, the filter cartridges are actually filters a good half of that volume is going to be a, a media that takes out chlorines, tastes, and odors, and things like that. And it's also counting on the naturally occurring minerals from the tap water to end up in your glass and help support the pH level. So that means there's not as much of a, of a mineral ingredient in the cartridges to put the mineral concentration back in the water that you need with, a, with an RO system. 
Um, so you just have to expect you're going to get a little bit lower TDS with a pitcher than you would with our, our next option, which I'll talk about shortly. Uh, it's just going to give you less minerals. Okay. Um, but for everything else, it's, it is a much better approach than uh, the drops or baking soda or those calcite cartridges. So pitchers are a good way to do it. They're just not the best way to do it. And we're going to talk about that way now. All right, lastly, and this is by far our top recommendation, it's called the Vitev Remin. Now, obviously, we're a little bit biased towards this, right? It's our product. We came up with this. And we put this formula together about probably eight years ago now with the specific purpose of addressing this exact problem. Okay, so when we talk about uh, putting the good stuff back into your RO water, it's more than just minerals. There are actually some other aspects that we need to be looking at as well to making the water as healthy as we possibly can make it, as hydrating as we possibly can make it, as beneficial as we can make it. So um, let me walk through the stages here. So first we're gonna talk about pH. It's gonna bring the pH of the water up easily up to eight and a half to nine and a half. Uh, it's pretty simple to do that. Uh, and this cartridge will do it for a long, long time. Uh, to support that pH though, you can't just have empty pH, right? You gotta have some minerals in there as well. We bring our minerals up. Uh, and we're looking to address it in four main areas, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and a little bit of sodium, naturally occurring sodium. Those are the four big alkaline minerals. Um, what sets ours apart from a lot of the other stuff that you can find out there, though, and we'll talk about those in just a second, is um, the form of calcium we use. We found a, a little company in Nevada that harvests what's called above-the-sea coral. Uh, it's a special kind of coral calcium they cut for us. It's a very rough cut. Um, it's the only one that we could find that was eco-safe. A lot of the problems with coral are, uh, are that they can be just kind of dredged off the bottom of a, of a bay or a harbor, and... Uh, there's a lot of shipping and industrial activity that goes on and all that stuff falls down you get a lot of pollution in your coral. So we wanted to find one that was clean and that's kind of, that's what's called above the sea. Kind of think about it as maybe mowing your yard. That's a good way to, to just picture the process in your head. And so this company does that. They harvest it out of the Caribbean in these pure kind of pristine places. Uh, and what we get is a really good bioavailable form of calcium that's, that's also has about 73, 74 other uh, trace elements, trace minerals in there. You can see the report on our website to see what else is in there. Some of that stuff makes it in the water, some of it doesn't. But it's just a much more holistic and healthy and beneficial type of calcium than the cheap calcite stuff, right? So that's one thing that sets ours apart. But you're going to find all four of those minerals in the water. Now, we're not trying to make this into a supplement. We want to just give this a nice, easy balance to the water to make it as hydrating and good and easy to get into the cells as possible. Um, this is not, don't think about this as a, as a supplement where we're looking for 200 ppm or something like that. We want it to be much lower. So our cartridge starts fairly high. You got to get some of the dust and whatnot out of the minerals. And then it'll, it'll, it'll kind of settle back out into that 30 to 50 ppm range most often. Um, and that's just a nice, comfortable, easy level that allows you to use it all day, every day, and everything you drink, everything you make with water, all that. You're at a good, safe level. Um, so that's the, the mineral piece. Maybe even more beneficial is the antioxidant side. Uh, because of the, the Vitev mineral mix, our kind of proprietary mix that we do developed, uh, we're taking the antioxidant level and really driving that down into the negative ORP, if you're familiar with that term. It takes the oxidation, the, the aggressive, harmful peak component to water, and reverses that and makes it a healthy, kind of sacrificial benefit for our body. And we're supporting that with molecular hydrogen. You'll actually see bubbles in the water you can see the, the, the hydrogen, especially early in the morning or when it's been sitting for a little while, that kind of builds up. Um, and so you're going to get both forms of antioxidant protection that we want to have. Um, that right there is the only side effect or the only downside to the way we had to set the remand up. And that, that reaction, that antioxidant reaction is going to produce a little bit of pressure. Uh, when you install this right after the membrane and put it before the tank, uh, the tank will help kind of cushion that a little bit, but you're still going to get some sputtering and a little bit of pressure from the faucet, particularly with a, a brand new cartridge for the first couple of weeks and particularly first thing in the morning after it's set overnight. Uh, if you have to install it after the tank just because of the type of RO you have, um, first of all, check with us and make sure you actually do need to do that. We can probably show you some ways around it. Um, but secondly, you're going to get a little bit more pressure. It's going to take a little bit longer for that to, to wear off and break in. Um, but it's one of those things like, well, every benefit has some cost, and this is a cost that we're willing to pay because of the benefit of the antioxidant aspect. And then lastly, taste. Uh, taste is probably the thing that people comment on the most. It tastes phenomenal. Part of that's the calcium blend we have, and part of that's some of the ceramics that we use as well. 
Uh, but this is not going to be a stale, bad, aggressive tasting kind of not kind of metally or, or rubbery tasting water that you can often get from an RO because that low pH aggressive water sitting in the tank, just kind of pulling the flavor of the metal and the bladder out. Um, none of that's going to happen. And if you install this before your tank, anything you have after the tank, a lot of ROs have polishing filters and carbon things and stuff after it. Uh, you can get rid of all that. You don't need it anymore. All those things are doing is improving the taste of the tank water. They're not adding any benefit for you. So you can pretty much take those off and stop replacing them and save some money there. And speaking of money, you can plan on maybe spending about 10 bucks a month for one of these. Lasts a year, simple connection, quarter inch quick connects on the ends, and you're good to go. So hopefully this helps. We've walked through all five main categories, giving you the pluses and minuses of both. Uh, as I said, the Remin is by far our most, our most significant recommendation. And if you have some questions, you can contact us down below. You can send us an email. You can call us. You can lots of different ways to reach out to us and talk to somebody. Uh, we've done thousands of these. And uh, if you have your RO name, a picture even, just from underneath your sink or a manual or whatever, uh, we can even give you some custom suggestions on where to install it, what to do, how to make it fit best for you. And if you need some little parts and pieces to make it work, we're happy to provide those as well. So let us know if you have any questions. We're happy to help and we look forward to talking to you soon.